Welcome to another episode of the Modern Facilities Management Podcast, brought to you by Flowpath. I'm your host, Griffin Hamilton. This is the show where I interview industry experts who share their stories, strategies, and insights into modern day facilities management. From hospitality to commercial real estate and everything in between, we'll learn what it really takes to succeed as a facilities manager. Welcome to another episode of the Modern Facilities Management Podcast. Today's guest comes live from Michigan. I've got Jeff Twardzik. Jeff, how you doing? I'm doing great. How are you doing, Griff? Doing well, doing well. Uh, I, I mentioned uh, you being up in Michigan. I know that you go back and forth quite a bit uh, from where I'm at here in Atlanta, uh, and that's where you guys at Kimoto AI are based out of. But uh, before we dive into the meat and potatoes of the conversation today, why don't you tell the audience a little bit more about who you are and what it is you do? Yeah, for sure. Currently, uh, you know, I'm the original founder and president of Kumoto AI. Um, but that, that entire journey started with uh, being in the facilities world uh, in healthcare. I did 11 years in healthcare as a facilities director with a few different systems. Um, but in that time that I was in there, um, just watched the guys struggle to find the information they needed to do their jobs. Uh, and it just seemed like an incredible amount of time was spent searching for that, you know. And, um, and trying to change that culture is a really difficult thing to do. Uh, so I tell everybody really what I was looking for, and this is, God, this is 15 years ago at least now, um, went out to look for uh, YouTube for maintenance guys. Uh, some, way, some way that I could capture you know, some of their knowledge on video and have it out there in the field. Uh, I think all of us, you know, when we're gonna fix our mower at home, we go to YouTube, right? I'm definitely not going to pull open the manual. I'm, yeah, I'm no kidding. To I'm, I'm, the video makes a ton of sense, right? And it's easy to follow, you know, and anybody can do it. And uh, so really that's what I was looking for. Um, nothing like that existed. And then my head just spun to, you know, maybe this is something that I could dive into and find. So started trying to discover ways to do that. Um, really got really lucky. And, and a friend of a friend introduced me to our CEO, Mark Morrell. Uh, and I tell everybody I had the best cup of coffee I've ever had was meeting him in Atlanta. I was on a family trip. Uh, met him in Atlanta. Uh, I had a cup of coffee with him and, and you know, shot this idea at him and, and he got it right away. Assembled a great team of people that he had worked with in the past uh, and it all fell together and it was a lot more than YouTube for maintenance guys, I can tell you that. But trying, <laughs> sure. but trying, to, solve, trying to solve those problems that I, I saw in the workplace for so many years. So um, that, that's where it all started. Yeah, it, it's always funny. The there's got to be a better way moment, and yeah. it, it usually isn't one singular moment. I, I feel at least for for us at Flowpath, um, that was something where over time in my previous career, I just kept finding problems, the same problems over and over and over again. And um, it's amazing how creative you could get whenever you're very annoyed constantly at the same problem. And, and so yeah. that's when uh, really unique and, and creative ideas come come out in the world. And uh, that's a really cool uh, backstory on, on what you guys are doing. And um, I guess give a little bit more context on what Kimoto is. Well, we're really a, a facilities knowledge base is what we are. Um, every time that we pitch to people, they assume that we're a CMMS system. We are not. We want to we want to sit alongside of those systems and support those systems. Um, those systems really are your system of record for your assets, right? Doing your PMs, doing your work orders, holding that information on that. The place that most miss uh, is when you get granular, you get really down to the meat and potatoes of doing the guys doing their work. Um, so a lot of that's you know you you print off the PM, you walk out there with this piece of paper, you're supposed to perform this task, and you know how do I do that? So that's really where I saw the problem, right? They're coming back and they're looking through file cabinets or O&M manuals, um, you know, looking on a zip drive or a share drive, which was, you know, how do I navigate through that and find the information? Uh, and inevitably they found the 20 or 25 year old veteran uh, because he had it upstairs in his head, right? And then they went off and did, you know, did that them, themselves. So uh, we're really trying to provide all of that information at the place that they're working for it, working at. So. We provide interactive plans, so you know where that where that equipment is and what it supplies. Um, have the O and M manuals right there at your fingertips, and not just an O and M manual that you would leaf through. So that three or four hundred page O and M manual is almost useless, right? I mean, especially when you're trying to scroll through. Um, so that's part of our AI is it's finding all the information you need. So if you're looking at an error code on a, on a say a supply drive uh, on an air handler, 
uh, you can just ask for that error code and it's going to give you the solution on what to do for that, you know. So trying to get all that information right in the guy's hands when they're doing their job. Yeah, no, and that's that's so very important to have that, uh, capture that tribal knowledge. And it, it's great to have it digitized and that's step one. But to your point, having it readily available in the field because there's yep. really no point of having that data unless, you know, something is, some yep. action is taken there. And so uh, I would be curious how your clients and, and just people in general that have that type of access in the field, the response time and the time to completion. Uh, what, what typically do you see uh, as far as that decrease in time uh, whenever you have that digitized? Yeah, our biggest client um, just came out with an article and, and said that it figures that they, it saves 10% of their, their time uh, across the board, which is a huge number, as you know. Um, mm -hmm. If we can start saving 10% of your time and making that productive time, not searching time, uh, we've really accomplished what, you know, we need to do. Now, I won't kid anybody. It takes it takes some time to make that change. Um, sitting in that seat when I was a facilities director, that was always the hardest thing, right? Change, changing the way that we do things. Um, and and that that's coming. I don't you're not going to stop that. You know, the guys, you know, with the keys on their on their belts and down in the basement taking care of the boilers and never really showing their faces, those days are are gone. Um, these guys mm -hmm. have become interactive in in their buildings. They're they're expected to be out there showing their faces, taking care of their clients, which is the people that are in that building. Um, and let's give them the tools to do their jobs in a better way, you know. So it takes a little bit of time to shift their brains. Um, this is just new stuff. Uh, but once they get there, uh, they realize, you know, how, how significant it is and how powerful it is. And, and I would say across the board, all, all, all employees are going to get a big benefit from it. New employees, especially, or mm -hmm. employees that are in a new building that they're trying to become familiar with. Um, you know, just, just being able to navigate that building and know where things are. Um, uh, who do I call? Who's the vendor that I get a hold of? All of that information is all just in, in one place. We like to say, you know, it's a single pane of glass, you know. Um, I've, I've had a couple of people talk to us about that you have your box of stuff. My box of stuff, and I'll age myself a little bit, was a file cabinet, right? Mm -hmm. So my box of stuff was a file cabinet that I had to dig through and try to find this stuff. So now everything's become digitized. It's still a box of stuff. It's still spread out like a week's wash. And where is that stuff at? You know, so we're trying to get all of that, your box of stuff in a place where you can search for it quickly and, and find the information. Yeah. And, and go back into the immediate, you mentioned that 10%, right? Like that, I don't want to just blow over that because every single person I've talked to wants more headcount. Like there is yeah. not enough time in the day. That's just the nature yep. of facilities management. And uh, I mean, it just aligns so well with what we're talking about on this podcast. So just the turnover that is happening right now and just the lack of talent to replace yep. said turnover. And so just those small little wins there just make such a big difference. But um, going back to what you just mentioned as far as staying organized, I think that's also another fine line that you have to walk of. Yes, we want to digitize everything, but at what point is it information overload? How do you oh, stay yeah. organized? That's a big question that I think a lot of people have to answer. And how have you guys addressed that or how do you view that information overload? I think, I think that's where we're really leaning on the AI part of it is when, when we get all of this information collect it all into one place, um, and then the ability to search for that. So, you know, on Kumoto, you could you could actually like Google. You can say, "Hey Kumoto, I'm searching for you know, give me the shutoff valves for the third floor," and it will produce a plan for you, show you where those are at. You know, um, as an example, you can just search via text, or you can you know um, you know scroll through folders. But our team does an incredible job of counting clicks, uh, and we just obsess over this being easy. It has to be incredibly easy for these guys to adopt it. So if we're two or three click or three clicks in for sure, unacceptable. Like we need to be two clicks, get the information or ask for it and get there, you know? So we're trying to collect all this information, which is, I mean, that's daunting, right? I mean, we, but we do that for our clients, you know? That's one of the things I think that separates us is, is we're walking in there, standing side by side with our clients finding all that information, digging through it with them, getting it downloaded. And then, you know, obviously then we can get it back to them as quick as possible. Yeah. And you bring up AI and over the last six months in particular, that has gone from just a, you know, a buzzword to now yeah. is reality in almost every day. I mean, personally, I am using chat GPT on a daily basis. Yeah. Uh, I, you know, I think that is something where 
we are at the beginning of the adoption there. And I, I think that the people in the field have so much to, to gain from AI, but it can be scary. I, I mean, I feel like for the last you know, two decades, it's AI, you're thinking Terminator, you're thinking the end of the world, <laughs> but this is a reality now and there is value there, both at you know, white collar and blue collar professionals. So how have you guys stayed ahead of the curve on AI? And what has been the, I guess, how well has it been received by people out in the field? Yeah, I would say that the chat GPT that, that you're talking about, which is incredible, right? I mean, the stuff you ask it and it, it produces back, you know, I, I think about my youngest son as a going to his senior year at Michigan Tech right now. And I'm like, oh, my God, if I had that when I was there, that would have been oh, wonderful. Man. You know, could you please <laughs> write this paper for me? Um, so it's incredible what it's doing. But I think the thing that separates us is that we are not for whatever client that we have, we are not searching everything across the globe like it is. We are searching through the information that pertains to your building, the videos that pertain to your building. So when that comes up, you're getting the information. You're confident that the information that you've gotten is the correct information. We're not we're not globally searching to answer your question as an AI. We're, we're searching through the content that you have for your building so you know that what you're getting is the good things. So. Yeah, it's a personal AI assistant, if you will. Yeah, uh, yes. yeah I love yeah. that uh, because, again, it can be overwhelming, and if you do – uh, I would imagine if it is all about you know the customer, it's all about the end user. It kind of is a big you know sigh of relief where it's not this daunting AI. It is okay. This is just helping me out at my yeah. building. This is very personalized. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's really what we're focused on. So. Love that. Um, and, and so another big piece of what we've talked about in the past has been just day to day tasks. So not only having the you know emergency repairs and, and the documentation to resolve those emergency issues. But uh, you mentioned healthcare. That is something where there are checklists daily yeah. that you have to go and make sure that you're doing the right inspections. And so uh, that's another big component where I feel as though that is a, la a little lagging compared to the reactive work orders. Uh, I think CMMS has been around for decades now, but for some reason, those inspections still seem to be, you know, pen and paper. How have you seen people adopt the digital inspections and checklist, uh, I guess, as opposed to just same old, same old pen and paper and not really having the data to report on? Well, I guess the last part that you said, them adopting it has been incredibly received, I would say, you know, because they see the results. Uh, but to, to fast forward in our journey or to rewind in our journey, we, we really were trying to Number one, get the knowledge out of the, you know, the tribal knowledge out of the guys that knew what they were doing and, and be able to have that readily available. So whether that be a, via video, annotated pictures or, or text or whatever that is, let's get that so that it's used into the future. And then this information overload and let's get that all in there. But as our journey went on, we, the more places we walked into, we saw that pen and paper that you're talking about, right? And how in the world, you know, they were asking the question, well, how do we get that into here? So we were almost like pushed in like, okay, let's, let's figure out this, you know, and let's pivot and make this happen. So um, we've come up with these great digital forms and checklists that are real easy to walk through, um, conditional lo uh, logic inside of it. The beautiful thing that we have is that adding videos and content to those individual steps is, is in there also. So let's say we're doing a, a daily round in a hospital and we're walking through a, a boiler room and I'm a new guy as I'm walking through there and going through this checklist and I, I could have a video of the guy that's been there doing it for 30 years of him doing that. And it's like 10 seconds, right. To show me how to do some piece of that. Um, so if I'm lost, I can always refer back to that. Uh, the other thing is, is if there's something wrong and I check him, you know, I'm supposed to be before between 40 and 50 pounds on some gauge and I'm at 70, it gives you the, it gives you the, uh, the how to, to fix that too. So I'm not just checking the box and going, well, it's out of range. I check the box, it's out of range, it's gonna create a secondary task that says, okay, now this is what we're gonna to do to fix that. Or this may be who I need to call at this moment. You know, there's, there always reaches that point where, okay, this is out of my hands. You know, so we do that also, which is just a safety thing. So, and, and just attaching um, lockout tag out to those things before you jump into a piece of equipment and all that just being in one place, again, getting back to that single pane of glass. Um, that's really what we're trying to provide. Yeah. And, and I mean, that is great that there's action that could, that could take place. So we see that time and time again, where it's like, okay, I checked this, there's an issue. 
because the next step is to go on to the next you know to do yeah. or the next inspection that could be forgotten or you have yep. to go back to that location and resolve said issue and so yeah. uh, i mean that is just great to have that knowledge once again right in front of you to just say all right here's the issue here's what steps i have to take to resolve it boom it's done don't have to worry about it and i yeah. imagine from a liability perspective that that is just it's secondary uh, benefit of having that whole process digitized and automated. So you aren't, you know, you don't have, you know, uh, any risk out there uh, of something bad happening. Yeah. And then, and then the other thing is right as a manager, supervisor, director, whatever, how great is it to be able to look at that data? Like I can, I can go back not that long ago and I see a lot of facilities doing this now and not bashing on them. This is just the way that you do it, right? Is you do these daily rounds and, guys would walk into my office and I'd be like, did you do your daily round? And they'd say, yes. And, th and that was the end. You know, I don't even know what you did, what you looked at, what's going on. So now I have this digitized, digitized form that's capturing all this data so I can watch trending. I can see like, why is that pressure increasing over the past month or so, you know, or, or things that are happening. Um, and, and then just accountability of, of, of what the guys are doing and making sure that they're doing that stuff. So um, the back end of having that data, being able to utilize that data and react to it is, is invaluable. Yeah. And, and so now we've hit both sides of it where you, you're having the, the folks out in the field that you have the value of having that data, having that information in your hand, but now you have the back office and the management uh, team that has the ability to hold them accountable, but you're also being able to forecast out, okay, based on said data, here's where we should, you know, focus our energy and efforts to eliminate any potential emergency repairs uh, or emergencies just in general. Yeah. Uh, so now you've got both sides of it. And I think that's where you have to take a step back and look at it where you have to have a solution to problems across the entire organization, both on the technician side and managerial side. And I, I love that that uh, in one place you have both both parties taken care of. Yeah, yeah, it has it has worked out really well. And I guess moving on from there, I mentioned eliminating or trying to reduce the emergencies that happen. You can't entirely run away from uh, yeah. emergencies. It happens. Uh, that's just part of the world of facilities management. Uh, but when you are in a panic moment, uh, that is something that can throw people off and it could lead to even more uh, severe problems. So talk to me about how all of this wrapped up in a single location can help in that type of scenario. Yeah, and you're exactly right. No matter what we do, no matter what technology comes out, stuff happens. It just does, right? It's, uh, a breaker blows that's really critical in your building. Uh, a water line snaps, gas line snaps, what, something goes on, you know? And inevitably, and this is just human nature, I, I always <laughs> say that you end up kind of running in a circle for a moment, right? And you're just like, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. And you're just, you're really doing nothing. Um, and the ability to take one positive step forward, I think, is really what we're trying to do. So the, let's just state the water line. And I can, I can, you know, one of the hospitals that I worked in in the past, when I walked into work, I walked in through a loading dock, eight foot hallway with an inch of water across that entire hallway flowing like I should have grabbed my trout rod and got ready to go fishing. <laughs> I mean, it was just dumping out of there. <clears throat> so a two inch main had, had blown. And there were people running all over the place and nobody could find that shutoff valve. And this had gone on for a long time and it was in a supply room. So a supply room in a hospital, now I've got a hundred thousand dollars worth of equipment and water's flying all over the place. And what am I doing? And, and literally there was 10 people doing that circle run, you know? Um, and when the 25 year old vet veteran came through the door, that was the moment Like he was calm. He had seen this before. He was calm in the moment. And he remembered there was an addition put on, a 2015 addition put on there that this water line had gone through. And he's like, I think I know where the main shut off is. And he found it and shut it off. And then we went on our way. Um, if it wasn't for him, I know exactly where this was going. I was running to the, I was running to the plan room and I was going to start digging through plans and try to figure this out as water is just flying. And in a hospital setting, I know a lot of people are probably saying, well, just go shut off the main and figure it out. That is not an option. And there's other, there's a lot of other places too, because if you just shut the water off, you may have just killed somebody, you know, because they're on some piece of equipment, you know, so you can't just shut entire systems off. You got to figure out where this is from, you know? So then you just revert back to, 
if you have Kumoto or some other solution that can tell you where that's at, you know, uh, where's the main shutoff valve for this thing? And, and it tells you where it's at and, and off you go and you can find that and, and you know, mitigate. The other thing that, that we're trying to promote too is not siloing it just to the facilities departments. Those kinds of things inevitably happen at three in the morning. I don't know why, <laughs> why that is, but it just seems Always like it is. the case. Yeah. It's not when you have your A team in the building, right? It's, it's just like you get the phone call and you're like, it's going and you're flying there and you're trying to figure it out. Giving those people, empowering those people to be able to um, do something about that, you know. So if that's just shut the water off, obviously that's amazing. You know, we've all been in that situation. The more that water flies, the more damage and the more money, you know. So um, anybody in the building, um, the way that we design it is unlimited users. So we would like to have everybody in the building have, you know, some access to that. And you don't have to have full access, but for those kinds of things, you know, just to be able to go and take care of that. So. You know, if we're talking about a hospital setting, that's a security guard that's there in the evening. Maybe it's the nurse, um, whoever that might be, that can at least, you know, stop it. <laughs> and yeah. then we can go in and, and repair it. So, but I, I can't agree with you. Panic moments, they're happening. They're going to happen in every building across the globe. Uh, and just, again, if we can give them a one positive step forward, you know, that's our mission. And then, and then we can start taking care of the problem. Yeah, absolutely. I love that. Well, mm -hmm. uh, Jeff, I do have one last question for you. And yeah. I, I ask everybody, uh, and that is who or what has had the biggest impact on you and your career? Wow. Um, I've had, I've had a, a couple of people that I've, I've worked with in the past. Uh, uh, Glenn Patrick, it was, you know, he brought me into healthcare. Um, um, he's a very good friend of mine and an incredibly intelligent guy. And I, I loved the way that he approached, uh, healthcare and facilities management and learned a lot from him. Um, so a lot of what I've done, uh, from that moment on in my career, when I worked there was, was outlined from Glenn, I would say. So he had a huge impact on me, uh, in, in my career there. Um, the way that my dad attacks things, I would, I would, I'd be, uh, ashamed if I didn't mention his name. I love I love the way that he attacks problems. Uh, so when we talk about me seeing a problem, that's that's definitely just residue from my my pops. Uh, but then um, in the world that I, I live in right now, I would say my my uh, good friend and CEO of Qmoto is uh, Mark Morrell. Um, you know, he's a, a great leader in this space, and uh, I've learned a lot from him. So. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, that's a great point. You never stop, right? No matter yeah, how far yeah. you progress in your career, you've got to lean on people to, to help you make it to that next step. So yeah, uh, I absolutely. absolutely love that. Well, uh, once again, Jeff, certainly appreciate you coming on. Thank you for taking the time and uh, sharing your story. Uh, this has been incredible. I know there's a, a lot of trending topics that we discussed and I'll put a recap here in the show notes and, and link your uh, LinkedIn profile as well. If anyone wants to reach out, but, uh, otherwise thanks once again for coming on and be good. Yeah, no, it's, it's been a blast, Griffin, and, and thanks for having me, and I love what you guys are doing. Appreciate it, Jeff. All right, take care. Take care. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of the Modern Facilities Management Podcast. Make sure to subscribe for future episodes and follow us on LinkedIn for more facilities management content.